Just a short video on the rainbows not being before the flood. And again, just because I'm using the scriptures in this video does not mean I'm trying to add, remove, change, or even record for posterity any part of the scriptures. Consider it a paraphrase. Read it all for yourself. Get a King James Bible. Jesus loves you. Basically, the creation science crowd, some of them anyway, been commenting about arguments that people shouldn't use anymore or things they shouldn't say anymore, basically. And one of them I noticed, as one of them commented to me directly, one of the channels, which is very unusual, I usually don't, who knows if it was a secretary or one of the scientists, I doubt it was one of them, but who knows. Anyway, I said they should stop saying there was no rainbows before Noah's flood. And as far as rain goes, I would say yes, it'd be hard to show in scriptures if there was no rain, right? I'll admit that, but the rainbow specifically, we know, was not until after the flood. I'll show that here with the scriptures. Again, creation scientists following the Bible and all that, it's very nice, good trying to share the word, right? But, they're letting their wanting a natural explanation for everything get in the way. They want to show, you know, the evolutionists that the Bible's, you know, scientifically perfect. But, you know, evolution's a joke. We should not be having to worry about whether the Bible says before or after. The Bible says it. We know it's true. We don't need a model of how that would work or how it wouldn't work. But again, the answer is in the scriptures. Let's go to the scriptures first. For those who believe, that's all we need to show, right? Again, Genesis chapter 9. And God spake unto Noah and his, to his sons with him, saying, And I. Behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark, to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither Shall thou any more be a flood to destroy the earth? And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud. And it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth, and it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh, and the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So here we see God, after the flood, is setting the rainbow, his bow in the cloud as the token of the covenant an everlasting covenant between all flesh. I mean, that's that should be pretty much it. But what the problem is with these, again, not saying anything bad about them, so as long as they're saved, right? Whether they believe the rainbow was at this time, the next day, whatever. The important thing is you're saved, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? But, they're telling people not to use this. I don't think that's appropriate here. Because we can clearly see. So basically. 
The problem they're having is, if there are no rainbows before Noah's flood, they're trying to explain uh, Bible things scientifically, almost too naturalistically. Keep in mind everything is a miracle. Matter and energy is not going to create itself. Everything's a miracle. So a rainbow being a miracle is no problem for me. Or you. But if they say there's no rainbows, then they have to say, well, was there rain? It doesn't say specifically there was never any rain until Noah's flood. So if it's not in scripture, right, that's the problem. Is you'd be, you know, you wouldn't have the scriptures there about there's never any rain. But it specifically says the rainbow. So you have the choice. Are you going to believe that there was no rainbows and no rain? Or that there was rain with no rainbows? And because they're trying to explain it too naturalistically, if you ask me. They don't want to say... There was no rain, and they don't want to say that there would be no rainbows because they know there's water, there's still the air, the sunlight, and all that. Well, it's quite simple. Let's go to Genesis 2 here. Genesis chapter 2. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, and the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth. And every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord to God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. And we see here specifically tells us the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And they'll say, well, it doesn't say until Noah, right? Which is true. So if they want to believe that, again, it's not doesn't mean they're not Christian. But notice this here. God specifically gives us a verse. Every word is pure. Telling us how he would do it to water the whole face of the ground. So he's watering everything with a mist. Again, why put that in there when, again, God knows the future, right? Why show he's not using rain here, specifically? And then why show the gardens being rod watered with the river? So we have mist, river, the seas and all that doesn't mention rain except to say he had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Again, very strong evidence. But this is not all because they'll say, well, it doesn't say, you know, after they got kicked out of Eden or whatever, then it could rain or whenever. It didn't say he's not going to cause it until here. All right. Well, it's fine. Again, fine. If they want to believe that, I'm not saying they're not Christians. But I'm just going to show why I believe there were no rainbows. Let's go back again, Genesis 9. So again, they want to explain how could it be no rainbows if, well, there's not any rain if there's a mist, right? And the rivers. So that would explain you wouldn't have to have rain with no rainbows if you had this mist that God says waters the whole face of the earth. And again, when you go outside and there's a, a mist and there's dew, there doesn't have to be a rainbow. So it is empirical that we can observe it. But I'm going to prove from the scriptures, again, no rainbow. If you want to believe there was rain before, again, like I said, that's up to you. 
But then they're going to try and have to, they're going to want to try and explain rain with no rainbows, basically. I don't think there was any rain. But even so, it was no rainbow until God put it there. We're going to show it right here. First thing, they're basically saying there were rainbows beforehand. But notice this covenant that's everlasting. Behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. So he's talking to Noah and his sons and all of humanity. But he goes a step further here. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the ark with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. So here we see, and God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generations, I do set my bow on the cloud. So here we see this covenant is not just between man and God, but also every living creature, the fowl and the beast. So you're telling me, if you believe in rainbows before the flood, that these creatures saw the rain saw the rainbows that happened and the rainbows back then didn't have the meaning they have now and now after the flood a little canary bird or a chimp is going to be all scared when it rains and he's going to look up and see the rainbow and he's going to have to learn the difference between pre-flood rainbows and post-flood rainbows he's going to have to go read Genesis chapter 9 uh, that's just ridiculous. Now, an animal can see light. Makes real easy sense. You're telling me he's going to have to go learn the difference between pre-flood and post-flood rainbows by reading the scriptures? I mean, I don't know. A dumb animal can look up and see a rainbow and feel comforted, right? Uh, it seems like you're making the problem more complicated by trying to say there were no rainbows in the past. But. That's the first proof. It's with all life and animals. That's the first one. Second one. Let's go on to the second one. Where is it here? Here. I do set my bow in the cloud. And it should be a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Notice the word. My bow. Alright. We see here. When it's first being set. He uses the word bow. Because it's God's bow. That bent light. Did you see the rainbow? That bow. And yet later. In the New Testament. We see it's called the rainbow. The association of God's bow. With rain. Does not come until later. Because God's bow is now set in the cloud. So now. His bow is associated with rain. Called the rainbow. Before. Notice just bow. It's just God's bow. So the word itself. Going from bow. To rainbow. Again. Proof. There were no rainbows at this time. His bow was just his, associated only with him around the throne. And that's also, they'll try and say, it's the same word in some languages for bow and rainbow. They, again, they never considered that God is the one who they're naming their bow after, right? They always wanted to say the Bible is copying something else. No, they're copying the Bible. So the fact that it's just bow here is even more powerful evidence. The fact that it's animals who have that visible token. Again, you look up token, it's something uh, representing a visible or tangible fact, right? So if it's a visible sign in the heavens, these animals are seeing that sign. You're telling me they had saw the sign before and it meant nothing? No. It's just wrong. 
So, one, the animals, two, the word bow that becomes rainbow, and three, I do set my bow in the cloud. Let's go Genesis chapter 1. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. So try using the same logic they're using on the rainbow on this verse. Oh, the stars existed before God made them. Uh, he just repurposed them. No, God made them and set them in the firmament. So when he sets the stars in the firmament, he sets his bow that he has around his throne in the cloud... This is not, it was already there. The stars were already there. The rainbow was already there. He's repurposing it. No, God created the stars and set them there. God took his bow that's around his throne and set it in the cloud as a token of that covenant. The word set by itself proves it. The fact that God used the word bow, just bow, without rain, as it gets connected after he sets them together. The fact that the visible token can be seen by animals and all that. The animals don't have to read the scripture to determine a pre-flood and a post-flood rainbow. They could just look up and see the rainbow. All these things prove from the scriptures, I fully believe there were no rainbows before the flood. Now rain, I don't think there's enough scripture here yet. But, if there were no rainbows, and we see that there was a mist, I believe the mist probably did it that whole time. There was, again, God made everything very good. Probably not much bad weather at all on the earth that whole time. Which is also what we see later, Noah. Now they can eat meat. Now they have the rainbow. Now they have, and God reassures them about the seasons. But it's very simple. If you believe it's a mist that whole time, then of course you don't have to explain why there's a rainbow or not. But if you believe there's rain back then, then they're going to want to try and explain it. It's just God hasn't set the rainbow there yet. Right? But they want to explain it, you know, in a model, in some kind of naturalist scientific model. No. It's either one or the other. Right? If you want to say it was a miracle and there was rain with no rainbows, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I fully believe it was the mist until then. The first rain. But we know for sure that God didn't set his bow in the cloud until Noah. So again, however you want to imagine the rain in the pre-flood world, I don't think we have enough scripture there. Uh, that's up to you, right? But you're going to tell people not to say there was no rainbow back then? No. That's just you wanting to explain to a bunch of heathens uh, that you think it's a naturalistic explanation. It's not natural. Rainbows are not natural. God had to set his bow there. And it's, it got associated with the rain because it's God had set that bow there. That's just it. Just like he set the stars in the firmament of the heaven. Anyway, I went off way too long. Jesus loves you. Uh, thank you all for watching. And don't get too involved in trying to explain everything naturalistically. There are some things you just got to accept that God sells you. Can't go back in a time machine here. All right? Praise God, glory to God in the highest, and may God watch over you all in Jesus' name, amen.